welcome uh, up on stage Dr. Kedienda Chong, Director General, Preventive Health Services, Emergency and Response, Ministry of Health, South Sudan. I had the pleasure of listening to Kedienda last year in Geneva, and I thought we need this guy for the annual conference. So the stage is yours. I'll start the slides, and you can take this. Just push it up. Just, yeah, it should be on. Yeah, yeah as, as you have heard, my name is Kidienda, Kidienda Chong. I work for the Minister of Health, the Republic of South Sudan. I'm currently the Director General in charge of uh, Preventive Health Services and Emergency Response. Uh, I will take you quickly through South Sudan experience and uh, I know many people in the room might know South Sudan. Uh, unfortunately, we are known for, for some of the things that we would love to, to change and become one of the peaceful countries very soon. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to share here, where can I... Okay. Yeah, uh, what, what, what I want to share is uh, about strengthening the national health information system and South Sudan experience in this regard. I would love to have a quick presentation giving you some background and an overview of our health information system as well as uh, health information landscape assessment and results of, of that and then uh, our health information system focus areas, implementation experience, lessons learned, challenges, and what do we think going forward. Uh, as I just mentioned, South Sudan became independent in 2011. Uh, we are in a country where our country is, 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 where we are all older than our own country. However, we have the opportunity to join the world from where they are, so our country is administratively divided into 10 states and three administrative areas, and the overall uh, country is divided into a total of 80 counties. As you could see, uh, the healthcare service delivery is done at the facility level, and of course we have primary healthcare, we have the secondary and tertiary healthcare services, as well as a community health uh, care service delivery using what we call the BOMA Health Initiative. The BOMA Health Initiative is actually founded after we learned from rural extension in Ethiopia. Uh, as we also uh, work through the health information system, we are trying to make efforts to ensure more integration of the vertical programs, uh, such as HIV, TB, and malaria, and of course, we would want to make sure that this differentiated service delivery uh, is the approach. However, the Minister of Health in South Sudan adopted the District Health Information System, the DHIS2, in 2018. And we are still making f more efforts to further strengthen the National Health Information System with the DHIS2 as the only national reporting platform. And of course, the central uh, data re repository uh, in the country. Uh, where we came from, we have had a very big dilemma, and this has been the reporting system in, in, in the country for some years. Uh, a very fragmented uh, health information system with the many donors you could see, and some of those names are very familiar. Some might also even be in, be in this hall. They have always been pulling us using their own parallel reporting systems. And of course, we have tried to do some quantification of this electronic health information system, which was conducted. Uh, and we have seen that there are more than eight uh, reporting systems that were available and in use in the country by the different actors. Uh, <coughs> with this, uh, a, much, a much more 
formal assessment, uh, landscape assessment was done for the health information system, and the purpose was to mobilize joint technical and financial support for the implementation of the National Health Information System Strategic Plan, which we had, and we also wanted to allow objective baseline and follow up for any possible evaluations, and also to build consensus around the priority needs for the health information system strengthening. Uh, and, and, and of course, these are the results of that, of that landscape assessment. Uh, just to mention a few, you could see uh, our strengths. We have actually existing structures right away from the MNE unit that is there. We also had the policy and framework documents, including the strategic plan. We have the existing structures. We have also the political commitment within the ministry and the government. We also have some capacity at the facility level for verification. We have the availability of the standardized tools that were developed and reporting. And we have availability of functional DHIS structures at the county, at the central level. And even at the, at the facility level where the reporting uh, in those primary health care and the higher level facilities is happening directly. Our weakness is included inadequate funding. Uh, the whole, whole health sector in South Sudan is receiving less than 2% of the national budget. So you can imagine that the health information system will not really be well funded. We always have delays in the approval and dissemination of the policy framework documents. And we also have lack of high level steering committee at the time. Uh, that could really liaise and, 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 and coordinate well with the partners. Inadequate training was also another issue that affects data collection and reporting and management and lack of funds to retrain or to retain the human resource for health and that has been a big issue. Whatever we train in the health sector uh, and we are using what is referred to as third party implementation modality by most of the partners, funding is given to third parties which are mostly multilaterals or international organizations. So they keep fetching the good ones, the few staff that we have and we end up starting all the time from scratch. And that has become one of the biggest issues that, that we have been having. And of course, we could also uh, indicate also lack of reporting from the private sector. Our private sector is actually holding a good number of uh, service facilities, but unfortunately the report, uh, they are not part of the reporting system. Uh, the opportunities that we have is the existing emerging technology, and uh, we are happy of what we have also seen during this conference. With the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the colleagues. We also have some commitment from, from the donors and the support that they have towards the HMIS. We have the presence of the implementing partners across all the levels. This can actually be both an opportunity, but at times can also be a real threat, and, 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 and that is what we are also complaining of uh, because of the parallel systems and, and, and fetching of the well and qualified staff from, from the national systems. Uh, we also have the, the opportunity f with some of the partners to use the emergency uh, response funds or the funding that is given for emergency. And I'm happy here to, 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 to mention one, like uh, with the global fund, the COVID-19, the C-19 RM funding has been actually uh, uh, used to support the health system strengthening, which includes the health information system. Uh, availability of the human resource that we can use uh, if we are able to retain them, and the flexibility of some donors like what I have just mentioned with regards to the Global Fund. Uh, the threats are so many, and you can see uh, from uh, our context in terms of insecurity, because South Sudan is a country that has been in conflict with itself for a number of years. But of course, we have also the economic situation with high inflation rates currently in the country, and stable donor funding. We have seen that priorities are changing globally. And, and, and of course, some, some, some donors are not really uh, continuing as they were. We have limited internet and telephone communication structure in the country, and we have existing parallel reporting. Despite all the efforts that we are making, we come to forums like this, and we are always being preached all the good, all the good principles, but unfortunately, with most of our partners, those are not being followed practically. Uh, <coughs> lack of proper planning and of course these are the limitations and of course some of the partners and some of the of the of, of the donors are actually using their own their own priorities and that results in duplication especially with regards to the health information system donors policy on the hr recruitment some of the donors uh, have a very strange system they would tell you we are here to support you we are here to 
to fill the gap and we actually tell them, okay, for example, I have a department that's supposed to have five people, but I only have two. They will say, okay, we'll talk to our implementing partners to support you and fill the gap, maybe recruit two more people. They come back and say, look, we can support you to retain the staff, we can only uh, recruit and second to you. The positions are advertised to recruit to, the very two that I have will apply, they get recruited by the donor and then sent back to me. So unfortunately, they are not filling the gap, they are creating a vacuum. So here, even the two that I have, I lost them because the secondary staff is not your staff and, and will not be there. So that de de defeats you know, the, 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 the principle of sustainability and building the, the national system. In fact, I have been bold enough to tell some of them you are destroying the health system rather than strengthening the health system. Working culture and commitment. Of course, uh, lack of recent population-based surveys in the country. Many of our donors have not been committed enough to support us to build uh, the system and even do the, the population-based surveys. What we are mostly used uh, in, in our reporting are estimates. Uh, <coughs> the key areas of focus that we have come up with includes is actually a standardization of the health management information system, especially the tools, uh, integration and interoperability of all the health information system that do exist that do exist in the country to use the DHIS2 and then of course look at the element of the data quality and information use then of course coordination and leadership as well as governance and here when we talk of governance uh, is one of the major things that I would really wish uh, a forum like this and all of us to look at Data governance is becoming a real challenge. As he mentioned last year when we met, uh, we talked a lot about the data governance. Who is really in charge of the data? Who owns the data? Unfortunately, most of the efforts that are being made are very much silent when it comes to the data ownership. People will tend to speak about the data generators and data controllers. Surprisingly, you will see some paragraphs speaking of data controllers in country and data controllers outside the country. But more importantly, we do believe data is, is, is a resource. Data is sovereignty for the countries. I work for the government, and I know what it means. Uh, for those who believe the most uh, important resource is oil, we always tell people now data is going to be the new oil. So let's all open our eyes, and let's make sure that we, we, we are in charge of, of our own data. Here... <coughs> Uh, just a good example of what we have achieved. Uh, we have actually uh, done implementation of the digitalization of the LLINs distribution in South Sudan, and we use the DHIS2 uh, platform to, 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 to collect the data and do the reporting. It has enhanced the efficiency and accuracy and tracking of the bait nets allocation and, and, and the distribution. I actually wanted to mention that South Sudan, with the global fund cycle, we have never in the past completed a distribution even in, a, in, in one cycle, and a cycle is three years because of the context in the country and the difficulties. But when we digitalize it, we actually did it. Uh, the actual distribution took less than, than eight months. And for the first, first time, we covered over 80% of the country. And you could see here impacting over 15 million people, and that is actually the power of digital tools in public health interventions. Uh, <clears throat> what we did for that, we just structured it as follows. We started first to, after developing the plan, a clear plan, and setting up you know, a kind of a steering committee. For that, we came up with the training of the master trainers. Our country is vast. You know, one of the counties can actually be be, 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 be actually Norway and Sweden combined together. So uh, we, we trained the, 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 the master trainers that we deployed to the states and uh, we did actually the TOT at the state level and of course uh, that is the state and the county level and then we did the training of the volunteers which were used as registrars, supervisors and the site managers at the community level, at the village level. Uh, with this we ended up getting this. We, 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 we have uh, to say this in terms of the reporting, and you can see uh, a sample of, of one of the reporting when we completed the, 
the, the, the, the distribution. But more importantly, we developed a dashboard that was being actually accessed by all those who were interested to monitor, including the donors. And uh, our, our, our donors included the Global Fund and Against Malaria Foundation. So they had wanted to, 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 to track and see what is happening. So we set up a dashboard, and dashboard could, at any given time, tell us how many people have benefited from the nets, and could also tell us, among these, how many were the pregnant mothers and how many were the children under five. That are the most important target for the LLI distribution. And of course, the number of the nets that are distributed at any given time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest problems we have in South Sudan is that most funding mechanisms are use, using what is referred to as third-party implementation modality, whereby some of the international organizations and, and, and multilateral organizations receive the funds on our behalf. Uh, we understand because of, you know, issues of weak systems of accountability and so on. But uh, there is a perception or an assumption by these funding mechanisms that those ones will build the capacity of the national entities which we kept telling them they will never do it because they are actually conflicted. They would want to sit on the job for forever. So they, they, can't, they can't build our capacity unless something else has to be done. So uh, for this LLI distribution, the, the, the UNICEF is, is the funding recipient. However, UNICEF contracted uh, two service providers, one included Malaria Consortium, and an international company based in somewhere in Europe here, I don't really know what it is, but it's called IPA, and they were tasked to do the door-to-door -door distribution of the nets in the country. It was quite challenging, until we had to make some modifications and engage sub-recipients to do the door-to-door -door distribution in, in the country. The LLI distribution was done digitally, as we said. We had to procure 6,000 tablets because it was used through the, the, the tablets. And then, of course, uh, the, the campaign was declared closed early in, 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 in February or by the end of January. And the distribution was completed in all the 10 states. And, of course, all the information like what we shared earlier. Uh, what we have learned through this success uh, is the fact that the strong leadership and governance is very important. We have had to be in charge. We kept reminding our partners, please, despite the fact that you are in charge of the resources, doesn't mean that you are the one to make the decisions. The, the decisions will have to, to be made through this structure. We, I personally have that experience realized. I come from a background that are pastoralist. We keep cattle. You know, in, in, in our community, those who, who stay in the cattle camp, those who sleep in the, with the cattle, they have a lot of pride. They feel they are more important than those who sleep in the, in the towns. It's, it's simply because they are in charge of the resources. I could also see this in the banking system, at least in Africa. I'm not sure. It might also be the case here in Europe. Those who work in the bank, when we go to the bank, we see they look very important. Eh? And, and you wonder, some of them might not even be having bank, bank accounts in those banks. They don't even know that what they are keeping our own money. But at times, they, they don't sell a lot of pride. And I really wonder, you know, <laughs> where does it come from? When you sit on the, on, on, on the resources, the power dynamics changes. That's what I have seen. This is what we are also going through. When uh, some of our partners are in charge of the resources, they also perceive that they have more power than the owners of the, of the resources. So we, we constantly want to remind uh, the, the implementation mechanisms that the countries will always be in charge. The principle of aid effectiveness requires that we align to the country's priorities and we harmonize with the national uh, structures. So the second thing, continuous in stakeholder engagement. We have all to feel that we have a role to play in what we are doing. So our community leaders, the, the, the women leaders, the youth leaders were part of the whole engagement. Uh, the need for sustainable funding is actually one, one important thing. However, uh, we also preach in forums like this about efficiency, but if I also look around and see the mechanism, the third-party implementation mechanism uses international organizations, multilaterals, which are never efficient. And they are not the front-line workers. They are not the foot soldiers. It, they, they always remind me of the, of the football clubs. You know, for us in Africa and in South Sudan, we are very much attached to, 
Paris Saint-Germain, Real Madrid, and all. But those guys, when they, some of you might really understand this well. When they have those big players, one important thing, those big players, they don't run after the ball. They don't chase the ball. They only wait for the ball in front of the goalkeeper. Someone else has to chase the ball all around to bring them. They're only good in scoring. You know, unfortunately, they're extremely expensive. The price of one of them can bring five young energetic footballers. Good enough, the football clubs have actually understood this. If you have four or five of them, you sell two or three of them. So we are telling the funding mechanisms. Our multilaterals and international organizations, they are very good. They are very good at reporting. They know what the donor wants to hear. And they provide a narrative that disadvantages the national entities. So they, they, they are very, very, very expensive. And using them is never sustainable. So it's, it's a call for us to still find a way to invest in building the capacity of the national system. And we use the national system that will be more sustainable if we really want to have sustainability. Ongoing training and capacity building, of course, that is necessary. And leveraging local capacity with the his groups. Here with us is his Tanzania. We are very much grateful to his Tanzania. And, 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 and that's what we are also trying to advocate. It would have been very difficult for us to achieve this if we are not getting the technical support that was being provided by his Tanzania. Uh, the challenges that we kept going through includes the lack of sustainable support to the DHS2 core team within the Minister of Health. As I just mentioned, even the donor funding that comes, it always includes support for building the capacity for implementation. But unfortunately, it rests on building the capacity of those third-party implementers. It doesn't implement, it doesn't support the capacity building for those frontliners. Those who sit in the health facilities, those who do the data collection, but not those who sit and do the infographics, who do the reporting, seated in the offices. Uh, the DHIS2 usage is still in aggregate form, but we are happy of what we have seen here now. The use of the trackers uh, that could allow us to capture individual data is really uh, something we are very, 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 very happy with. We are trying now to, uh, we are in the process of transitioning out from EWAS with the WHO to use the EIDSR using the DHIS2. Uh, some funding mechanism setting up is still some parallel systems and, and, and we are trying to, to, to dialogue. Uh, as I said earlier, some of these donors, honestly, I, I would love to, to advise them that it, would now, it is time now to talk directly to those that you are funding. You know, the third parties that you use uh, in many occasions, they use the role of a prophet. You know, some of us are Christians, and we reflect those days before Christ. Uh, we used to have all the prophets and so on, at least for Christians, those who believe that Jesus had to come. It's simply because my assumption, God himself found that the, 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 the use of the prophets was not so efficient, was not so effective. So he had to come himself to, to talk to us. So this is this, the, the same thing. You know, we, we are asking the donors, you know, the third parties are good, uh, but they are only transitional. Please, it's, it's, it will be more effective and more efficient if you get to listen to us directly. And, and, and we see how we can best bring the change. Otherwise, uh, as we look ahead, we would want to complete the integration and interoperability of all the parallel systems into the DHIS2. We want to solicit more resources to develop and strengthen the electronic community health information system because we currently, in our country, the facility-based services are accessible to less than 40% of the population. Our vast majority are rural and they are beyond the facilities. They, they live beyond five kilometers radius from the nearest health facility. So we are using the BOMA Health Initiative, which is our community health program. And therefore, for reporting purposes, we need the e uh, community health information, which have just started at a smaller scale. The Minister of Health is looking forward for a partnership with the learning institutions in the country to establish a center of excellence for the DHIS2 and his groups in order to address the issues of sustainability, producing more experts, and it's actually nationalizing uh, capacity for data analysis and data use for better uh, policy making and decision making in the country. Otherwise, thank you very much, and I stop here.
Please stay. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kedende. Uh, please remain on stage a little bit. We can take a few questions. Um, let's see if I find a microphone here. Any hands? Oh, far in the back. Okay. <laughs> Please introduce yourself and then, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you for, for a nice talk and also especially on the analogy you have made. I really like that. Uh, I'm Christian Bobe from, from the digital, uh, digital agency from the Democratic Republic, from the Congo. Uh, because we, we also uh, go through the, same, through the same path, but for us, like what we, because for the for data collection, we really leverage on the, on the telecom because in most of African countries, the telecom network is quite, is, is, the coverage is quite high. I don't know if you have also considered that aspect. The second question was on the, on the data government, because you, 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 you emphasize on that. I just want to know whether in South Sudan there is any like act which govern the, 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 the data within the country. And the third question was on the, on the pregnant women, because I saw like the statistics show around like 1.6 million uh, uh, pregnant women was uh, 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 under via uh, digital uh, 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 infrastructure, because we also have launched the, 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 the same initiative, but for us, we, we, we leverage more on the telecom to collect data and then to support women. Those are my three questions. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. As he walks to you, let me answer him. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, the... The, 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 the number of the women that you could see there are the number of pregnant mothers that we also want to, to, to capture alongside the under five. Uh, we do use the, 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 the mobile network that is in the country. However, the, 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 the network coverage in, in the whole South Sudan is actually uh, less than, 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 than 70%. Uh, but the beauty of what we have used, part of it was discussed yesterday, is the, is the, is the, is the, is the uh, tracker and the apps that works offline. So we continue picking the, uh, the, de the data, and uh, we have set actually a, ca a caveat, a maximum, that can be stored in the local uh, uh, server of the, of the, of the tablet uh, until they are taken to where there is network and automatically it sends to, to, to the server. Uh, one important point to note there is uh, you must have a specific limit for the data, max, maximum amount of data that can be, be stored there because there's a risk of losing the tablet and the tablet can get lost. And so we do not want also to, to take longer and get more data with the greater risk that if it get lost, the chances of going back to do it are very, are very difficult. And we also know that uh, the, 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 the network coverage, at least in all the states, is there, but some locations are not having it. Uh, with regards to the act, unfortunately, South Sudan, like many other countries in, in, in the region or in Africa, do not have actually uh, a, a, an act with regards to, to, to the data. And uh, I still remember our, our Ugandan colleagues are here. Uganda has actually an act of parliament with regards to the data sharing and data policy. And I mean the data sharing and protection policy. Uh, within the EAC, we have had discussions with the EGAT uh, platform. We have been having discussions on the data sharing and, 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 and dissemination. But it's still many countries are still very reserved. The issues of data governance, uh, they will come up. They are already uh, being discussed, and, and, and I'm sure it's going to be quite sensitive, like many other things that are being discussed. But it is very important that we must have a clear approach to the issues around data governance. Thank you. Yeah, last question. My, my question is in French. I don't know if I'm a traductor. I call myself Nisi. I'm from Imarod Elf, DRC, Congo. Uh, pourquoi je suis intéressé dans cette présentation C'est parce qu'en RDC, on nous a demandé maintenant de faire la campagne de distribution de moustiquaires avec DHS2. Mais non, j'ai une question pour savoir. 
je voulais un peu savoir comment vous avez pu gérer les comptes des différents utilisateurs. I hope someone will help with the translation. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm handicapped at that point. So. <laughs> okay, je disais ceci, je m'appelle Nissi, je suis de Imao Elf, RDC Congo. Euh, en RDC, on nous a demandé cette fois-ci de faire la campagne de distribution de moustiquaires avec DHS2. On est en train de faire déjà le pilote de cette campagne dans deux zones de santé. Maintenant, je voulais savoir comment les Sud-Soudan, je pense, ils ont pu gérer euh, les différents comptes d'utilisateurs. Parce que la pyramide sanitaire en RDC, nous avons des aires de santé. En plus, nous avons un problème sérieux de couverture Internet au niveau de notre pays. Maintenant, je voulais savoir chez eux comment ils ont pu gérer les comptes des différents utilisateurs. Parce qu'il y avait plusieurs tablettes déployées dans plusieurs villages. Comment ils ont géré ça Parce que et puis ma deuxième question que je voulais savoir, je voulais poser aussi aux développeurs de DHS2 pour savoir, est-ce qu'il est-il possible avec DHS2 d'enlever les comptes des utilisateurs de façon que si une personne veut collecter les données, il accède directement au formulaire et il avance. Parce que le niveau des personnes qui collectent les données au niveau des ménages en RDC, ce sont des personnes qui ont un niveau bas vraiment. C'est un peu ça, je voulais avoir des précisions sur ça. Merci. No, I think it's actually two questions. Yeah. yeah. So the the first question is uh, uh, he's asking how the name. Uh, okay, he's, 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 he's from DRC anyway. He's from DRC. Yeah. yeah. He's from uh, Ima in DRC, but the actual name I cannot uh, uh, remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's. Uh, The first question is, uh, he wants to know uh, how did you manage uh, the user accounts uh, during the, the campaign in, uh, in South Sudan? Because in DRC, they are also, uh, they have been asked to, to use DHS2 for, uh, uh, for campaigns. And the challenge they have in DRC is that they have uh, many tablets uh, that are deployed in many villages with many users. So they want to know your experience in uh, uh, managing the user accounts during the campaign. The second question is, uh, this is actually for the DHS2 community or the developers, he's asking whether it's possible to bypass uh, the authentication or the user accounts before doing uh, data entry because in DRC, the IT literacy is very low and uh, asking people to log in can be challenging for them. Over. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I will respond to the first and also say something about the next one. Uh, first of all, uh, the, 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 the question of the user account. We had two major things that we did. Number one, when we trained the volunteers, we have set the criteria for the selection or eligibility criteria for those that can, 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 can be, be, be recruited and trained for this. And, and, and uh, digital literacy was part of the, of, the, of, the, of the requirements. The first pilot was giving us a big headache where we got people that, was, that, that were not able to handle the, the, or operate the tablets, leave alone the accounts. So we, we improved as we started. So we improved the selection criteria and now we're able to get people We were surprised that we could find even some uh, university students among the volunteers, those that were actually in their hometowns uh, and were in, in, in holidays, because the requirement was also the volunteers will have to be selected by their local communities for all local ownership and supervision of what they will be doing. Uh, once they were trained, they were also given, uh, when, when at the point of the implementation, Each, each user or each registrar was created an account, and the account was more specific. It, it carries also the, 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 the code for the state, for the county, uh, and for the area uh, where the person is, the village for, for that matter, and then, and then probably the name or some letters of the, of the, of the user, of the user's name. Uh, the second important thing we did, we actually uh, recruited uh, system support teams 
that were also being delayed and uh, be, be being deployed, and they were being stationed in, in some areas that are closer to, 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 a, uh, to a certain number of, of registrars. So some of them at times can also uh, make mistakes. They can even raise the app and, and so on. So the, 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 the digital, I mean, the, the system support teams were able to always provide that technical support on a regular basis during the period of the distribution. Uh, the other advantage that we also got with the use of the, of, of the system, we also created a logistic form that helped us to track and ensure accountability over the nets. You know, in our setting, the nets, and I'm sure many other countries, the nets are being repurposed. The, the people are, are using them for fishing, they're using them for tying down the cattles, for building the houses. Uh, you can go and see a real bait net, a bait that is made out of the net as, 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 as ropes to make the bait. So we, we also needed to make you know, a serious supervision and tracking of the, of the nets. So the nets that were being repurposed or that were actually going to be missed, we are able to track them because accountability shows how many nets the site manager receives, how many nets he issues to each registrar, and the nets that are uh, issued to the registrars are issued to the population, to the people, and they must appear in the system. So if the nets are not in the system, they are not with the site manager, and they, they must be with the registrar or any of them. The other most important part is the geocoordinates. That was also one of the requirements. So we had an agreement uh, signed with the donor, especially the Against Malaria Foundation, that there is going to be post-distribution survey that will sample at least 5% of the, of the families. And therefore, they will be traced, and you will go back to the, the real family that is selected within the sample so that they are actually asked questions to answer and also verify whether they have received the nets, they are using the net, and so on. Uh, my last point before I hand over to you is just a reflection of uh, the situation between me now and my real brother from, from, from DRC. We are actually neighbors, and I believe uh, decades back we might have been actually living together in the same family. But now, because of the, of the, of the language variation, they are using uh, French and we are using English, we can't even understand each other. We needed an assistant. This is what exactly in the health information system we are telling our <laughs> colleagues who are running vertical programs. You know, <laughs> you know the moment you run parallel, you know, it, 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 it breaks so many things. So we are actually calling for uh, full integration of the systems, and we need to, 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 to decease from use of the parallel information system and, of course, the fragmentation of the health system in general. Otherwise, thank you very much. And uh, no, sorry, we have to cut that. We need also to have time for Ethiopia. Thank you so much. Thank Dr. you very Dienda. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I'd like to welcome on stage Jakob Wondarad, Senior HIS and ME Advisor, Strategic Affairs, Executive Office, Ministry of Health, Ethiopia. Thank you. I think now. Can you hear me? Yes, I think you can use this. And then you can see that, yeah, everything is there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this is Jacob from uh, Ministry of Fields Ethiopia. I'm here to present on behalf of Ministry of Fields uh, and my colleague here. Uh, so my presentation will be uh, on the enhancing healthcare performance in uh, Ethiopia using the district sales information system. So it's actually a country story. I hope you will have uh, not a question, but a clarification uh, questions or uh, yeah, a clarity uh, question. So I will, my colleague and me uh, will respond on that. Uh, this is my outline. Uh, I'm going to briefly say about DHS rollouts in Ethiopia, the governance and the leadership, uh, the local innovation, and the use case in the planning tool. Uh, so, this is country profile. You need to know at least three things about Ethiopia. The first one is, uh, is Ethiopia is the uh, origin of human being. And next to my Nigerian colleague, we are the second largest country in Africa. So if you invest in, uh, in Ethiopia, you can address 
so many populations, uh, and so we are not and uh, never being colonized. I think three three point is enough for you. Uh, this is our HMIS profile. We do have more than 38,000 organization units, including private, including all uh, org units. So uh, one, more than 1,400 indicators, uh, more than 13,000, 30 data sets, and more than 9,200 data elements. So uh, I hope all countries have this e-health architecture. So this is the Ethiopian e-health architecture. We have uh, the IST uh, infrastructure. At the right side, you can see shared activities, institution-based services, analytics, uh, analytics and business, intelligence, and population-based HIS data source, point of services, and at the last, uh, the digital health governance and standards. So the external system that are coming priority and the multi-sectorial uh, issues, uh, the financial, agriculture, meteorology, and education. So this is the journey that we came uh, uh, here until to the, 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 the recent version of uh, our DHIS2, which is version 14. So we started uh, like seven years before, I think, so in 2017, we used to start with the version 2.27, and then uh, and, and on 2018, we uh, fully uh, implemented the system, and in 2019-20, we started 2.3, then 2.36, and now we are, uh, we are implementing this uh, 2.4 by, by, by uh, after two weeks, we will start to uh, obtain the report from all the health facilities by this uh, for version 14 uh, DHIS. Here in governance and coordination, we really, we are really uh, uh, strict by this uh, strategy, which is called uh, harmonization and alignment strategy. Uh, if any donor or implementing partner comes to Topka, they should, they, they must uh, be guided by this strategy, which is one plan, one budget, and one report. So we don't accept any parallel system, parallel reporting, and so if you need to invest, you, ca you, you must come and uh, align with this strategy. So uh, Ethiopia is very serious on this regard. And uh, so the other one is, we do have uh, different digital health blueprints, a child strategic plan, maturity assessments, information revolution guidelines, and e-health architectures. So we established a clear governance structure for national resident committees, as you can see. So we have national uh, committees, the NAG, uh, and the DHS2, TWG, and uh, we have the core team. Then we have different uh, teams here, the requirements, uh, the data analysis and the use, development and customization, implementation and support, and uh, we, it is led by digital health as well, the strategic appears. So this is a picture that we captured for, from uh, National Health Data Week. This is our uh, state minister in, in Ethiopia. So our uh, high leadership used to commit uh, or invest in the uh, health information system enhancing. So this is the way, this is the, uh, one of innovative way to you know, bring uh, high level leaders to commit in the, in the, in the, in the, in the investment of uh, health information system. And we do National Health Data Week every year and that's becoming a very good uh, strategy to uh, advocate the use of the uh, data for, for, for performance improvement and it really helps us to become uh, very effective uh, in this regard. So the other strategy, we do recognize the model world as uh, who are working in health information system. So we have three different uh, criteria. One is the health information system structure 
So we, we rate that out of 13, then data quality major criteria, which is out of 13, and the data use. So if we invest in data use, we are pretty sure that the, our data qualities and everything will be uh, improved. So we uh, uh, prioritize data use and we recognize those model where does, uh, when, we, when I say where does a district, right? So we recognize those uh, districts uh, who, are, uh, who are champions or the model for in, in enhancing a health information system or information revolution. So this is the uh, strengthening local academia. We, the, 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 this is our former uh, minister, Dr. Lia. So we have, we have partnership with uh, universities or local academias, like we, are, we have started with six universities. And then under the, the, the six university, we have consortium universities so that they can uh, share and uh, cascade all the uh, experiences among the with ministries. So in this uh, capacity building and the mentorship program, uh, as I've said, uh, we have six universities, so they, they, they create center of excellences, not only the DHIS2, the community health information system. So I hope you know, uh, Ethiopia is very, um, leading country in implementing the primary health care, the, the health extension uh, program that enhanced the, the, the transformation of health system. So we are uh, implementing the electronic community health information system, the EMR, so these universities, uh, they, are, they, they are being the center of excellences for different uh, health, digital health systems. And the other one is curriculum de design. So in this, they used to train in the pre-service, so the, the health information technologies or the health informatics uh, department is uh, being provided by many universities. So they used to train the practical uh, things or the practical uh, looks that the, our health information looks like, looks like when they go uh, and uh, deploy in the health facilities, so we already in incorporated in the curriculum. And the other one is we harness the health demographic survey in the uh, health demographic survey, so they can generate different evidence that, that we can use for the data modeling and uh, for the different decision making. And the other one, uh, with local academia, we, 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 we are working in the evidence synthesis research and publications. So, this is the local innovation. We, come, we became very innovative due to many challenges. The first challenge is we, we are uh, like eight years back from Gregorian calendar. We have different calendars. So, uh, COVID is not yet came, right? So three years back, we are expecting COVID to come. So right now we are on 2016. And we do have also 13 months, not 12 months, 13 months. So that makes us unique. And uh, the other one is uh, we have unique requirements. We really do have unique requirements and we need to develop different uh, applications to fulfill our requirements. And the other things, uh, the challenge of uh, Ethiopia is the offline deployment. So almost uh, we, we deploy offline for almost half of our health facilities and that makes us to come up with different innovative ideas and innovative applications. Among them, these are uh, 10 applications that we use to develop on top of DHIS2. This is registration, custom data seed report, uh, we'll present about stakeholder mapping by uh, the day after tomorrow and routine data entry, the planning tool, import and export, laboratory reception, content completeness. These tools are the, the data quality uh, applications that we are, uh, uh, we are really having uh, better data quality uh, uh, system. So these are the applications, uh, I think, uh, we, we can share our uh, 
individual, uh, you, you can see when, when uh, we go out of this session, so we'll also present in another sessions. <coughs> the other thing, multi-sector initiatives. Now the priority of multi-sector is very, uh, becoming very uh, priority to us. So the, the one initiative is World Data Transformation, uh, multi-sector food and nutrition information system, uh, integration of multi-sectoral response information system and rehabilitation. And uh, we are also about to uh, intensively work on this climate and health. When we say World Data Transformation, this is a dashboard to monitor and visualize, uh, visualize uh, the transformation progress at the world level. We automate the calculating uh, by utilizing the, the composite measures and this uh, facility level ca calculation based on catchment population entered in DHIS. The other one, we have around nine uh, uh, ministers signature here. So we gather all of them to work in this nutrition and food related information system. So we are working with uh, agriculture, uh, children and they use uh, water, uh, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Trade, and labor as well. So we are using this, that's the same instance, uh, DHIS to, to collect and analyze uh, data from all sectors. And this is also one of our initiative in multi-sectoral initiatives. The other one is this, uh, the multi-sectoral response information system. So uh, we are uh, uh, using this system to collect on the uh, HIV service and non-clinical data. And we are expecting, we, we are, we, uh, the data entered expected at the world level, so that in the quarterly basis. The other one, rehabilitation information. So this is also very uh, uh, important uh, thing in our country. So we are uh, collecting mainly data approximately, approximately 14 facilities are uh, uh, sending their reports. This is very important thing to us, the, the planning tool, we call it integration world based planning. So we are uh, implementing this for, uh, for the district based planning and we automatic this system automatically calculates from previous year performance and selection of indicators for the world based plan aligned with the DHS to indicator reference guide. So as I've said earlier, having this good story is not because of developing only the applications or using the, the systems. The major thing is enhancing data use. When we enhance or when we practice uh, data use, we, we have uh, uh, performance monitoring teams that start from the health extension workers, from the health centers, from the at all level of the health system, including the administrative level. So every quarter, uh, I mean every month before they send their, their reports, they review, they do, uh, the, the, they review their data, the, the data quality of the health facilities and they send. So this is very important uh, strategy to enhance and see that the, the data quality before they send to the, they report to the next level. And also quarterly analysis reports and preparing different dashboard for senior leadership program managers and the public. And we do also MND related activities, which is support supervision, mentorship, and the feedback as well. Feedback is very important. So this is, I think, you know uh, about this, uh, and, and you do, we, we all do the capacity building. So the, the academies, we provided uh, level one that I use in analytics. So as my colleague from South Sudan said, we also invest in local expertise. We also not need uh, the, 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 the dependency or the external consultancy so that we can build our academicians and as well our local uh, uh, professions to enhance this, uh, the sustainability of the system in Ethiopia. So we have trained more than 10,000 and this is our use case. We can, uh, for that uh, planning tool, when we start this planning tool, 
for many years we used to uh, plan in Excel based, which is manual based. Uh, ma manual, uh, 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 we we plan in manual system so that the baseline and target setting are, you know, not accurate, and the cost estimation even. And the lengthy, we, have, we used to have very lengthy planning process and inaccurate aggregation of plan data. And this is this was our challenges. Now, right now, we are exercising, uh, we started automatic calculation of this denominator and target uh, setting. And the system automatically pull the baseline data from, uh, from live data so that we can plan the the target or the as well the baseline. Right now we are not perfect, but we are getting improved. So our end goal, uh, like in next year after next year, we will come with very seamless planning tool, which will improve uh, accurate tar tar target setting and denominator that align planning process with live data, leading to quality routine data so that we also improve the performance, not only for the improving the performance, so we can save or we can increase the effective planning and resource uh, utilization. And uh, also this will enable us to have more accurate and, uh, and, and other visualizations. Yeah, I think this is uh, very brief, so if any, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Jacob. Uh, okay, we have time for a few questions. Let's see, do we have any hands? Any questions, clarity? Over there. Welcome. Okay, yeah, I'll take this one. One more time, please. I saw a hand, yeah. <laughs> it goes this one first, sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Abdurrahman Mohammed working with UNICEF Somalia. I had a discussion for our brother in South Sudan, but uh, I, Sorry, will refresh, okay. I will refresh uh, to fit your presentation. <laughs> okay, let's uh, ask presentation, your panel. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is really informative and uh, a clear pathway for countries to learn from. So my question is, uh, we know there are so many countries that are very new to the DHS2. Barely you are not also that old in DHS2, maybe you are seven years somehow, but you really made a very good uh, turnover. So what is the capacity at the country level? Are you also getting support for technical? Or you guys have already have expert in your country? And how did you achieve that level of uh, expertise you are showing us here now? Thank you. Thank you. I think we can, that's a long one, so you can start, I guess. Yeah, yeah thank you. So as I've mentioned, uh, to, to come up with this, you can hear me, right? So to come up with those expertise, we used to work with academicians, with the universities that we have, and we invest a lot to, 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 to come up with this uh, local expertise. We uh, created or we developed those, uh, the, the, the DHIs to academies at different universities, uh, and also in uh, other places in the health system. So that's enabled us to more inf uh, invest in the, 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 the uh, DHS to academic, academic uh, so that we can have many expertise, we can have local uh, to provide even training. We, we, we don't go to the other uh, external consultants or uh, other, uh, other side. So not only that, uh, uh, we, we also uh, use the, 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 the regional uh, staffs or county staffs to be more, to, to manage their, their regions related issues, the everything issues will be managed by the region and only the, 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 the outstanding uh, issues will come to the ministry level and those, his uh, team will uh, answer or provide uh, and they, they also work 24-7 on that and they will uh, lively uh, update everything, every challenges that they uh, face. Thank you. 
Thank you. And also, uh, my friend from his can also respond on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we yeah. should mention that you have a growing uh, okay. team in Ethiopia, getting stronger yeah. every day. So, can I don't I know. I do you have a microphone, say? Mic. Oh. You can get one. I think one of the things we have to appreciate about Ethiopia is uh, before the HIS2 came into picture, there is a really good paper system in place uh, that have the ministry has invested a lot on to, uh, to even build capacity all the way to the health extension workers at the community level. So when the HIS2 came, it's a matter of translating that, transforming that to uh, electronic format with all those uh, local requirements seek by, sought by the ministry. Uh, even though the HISP team was very small in number, and uh, uh, but the ministry was uh, allotting us with some uh, core, te core technical team that are uh, easy to work with, they are motivated, they are capable. So we had, uh, uh, well, we are fortunate enough to, to create a, go a good core team that can support the regions. Uh, but most of the regions, as Yako mentioned, uh, was being done at the uh, regional level. All the uh, capacity building, response, uh, support, all those things are uh, uh, responded at the regional level, which, uh, which has uh, the capacity currently. Thank you. Thank you, Said from Hisp Ethiopia. Okay, let's do a question here. He's ready. Yeah. D'accord. Merci. Je Adam, are you ready? Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, je suis Daniel. Je suis. Uh, en charge de, du renforcement du système de santé à la cellule de gestion des subventions du Fonds mondial au Togo. Euh, J'ai suivi avec intérêt la présentation. Ma préoccupation concerne la, la multitude. Le présentateur a, a précisé qu'en Éthiopie, ils ont beaucoup d'initiatives, initiatives de digitalisation. J'en ai compté au moins 12. Euh, du coup, c'est pratiquement la même chose dans la plupart des pays. Donc, ma question s'adresse plutôt à l'équipe Ips, pas aux présentateurs. Je vois dans leur vision, dans la perspective, est-ce qu'il y a euh, cette tendance à pouvoir euh, fédérer tout ça dans Dish2 Parce que l'idéal, c'est d'avoir une plateforme unique qui fait tout pour éviter que dans le même pays, qui est plusieurs initiatives à la fois, à la limite qui embrouillent les prestataires et les utilisateurs. Donc, idéalement, ce que sur la plateforme DIG2, qu'on puisse continuer à travailler, à faire en sorte que tout ce qu'on fait de façon parallèle, que le DH2 puisse le faire. C'est un peu ça ma préoccupation, c'est de voir un peu si l'équipe Ips a ça en perspective dans sa vision. Merci. Thank you. Uh, he's uh, Daniel from uh, uh, Global Fund PR in Togo. He's in charge of uh, health system strengthening. Uh, his concern is about the multiplicity of uh, initiatives in, uh, in countries, and that's not only the case for uh, Ethiopia. So he want to know, and his, this question is actually for his group, he said, he want to know if it's possible to integrate all these uh, multiple initiatives into DHS2 uh, so that at the end the, the users and countries are not confused with uh, those uh, uh, pl uh, this plethora of uh, systems. Mm. Over. Thank you. Yeah. You want to answer, Jacob? Yeah, Malake, Malake. <laughs> I think it's because it's addressed to his groups, uh, so I will try to answer it. Uh, most of the initiatives that are here are based on the routine health information systems that we have. Because it is the backbone of the health system, most of the initiatives come and plug in into the HMIs. So that's why you see a lot of initiatives. And whenever there is a new initiative that's, that's planned, the ideal place or the government decides to use DHS to because we already have thousands of people trained 
And in order to get that much resource of a new system, then it takes a lot of resources and a lot of money <coughs> for it. So it's ideal for us to use DHIS2. There are some cases where we have separate instance of DHIS2, but mostly we use the HMIs to have all those data into the a single instance. The investment is very high to have separate systems. That's why we focus more on DHS. Thank you, Malek. Um, okay, we have one question here, and then I think uh, uh, I'm up there. Yeah. I'm, doc I'm Dr. Shan uh, from Sri Lanka. Uh, actually, I like to know more about uh, this laboratory uh, reception system and uh, stakeholder mapping. Uh, the stakeholder mapping, is it like uh, some kind of this facility registry-like thing uh, that I need to know? The other thing is the laboratory reception. Uh, uh, what type of system is that? Uh, is it a uh, full laboratory management information system or uh, something to receive laboratory reports or something like that? Because uh, in Sri Lanka also we have uh, this need of integration of laboratories to public health information systems uh, like in TB, leprosy, uh, in that cases. So I need to... Okay, I think let's see if Jakob, if you can answer very short, and then I suggest you spend the coffee break discussing with Jakob so you get more detail. I don't think we'll have time. Thank you. You want to answer briefly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I I'll also present this stakeholder mapping related uh, presentation by the after tomorrow. Uh, so this stakeholder mapping is when any partner came to the, the Ministry of Health, we do, we do list them, uh, the geographical areas that, that, that they went to uh, work. So this stakeholder mapping help us to uh, avoid the duplication of the partners to invest in the same areas or the same geographical uh, areas so that we can align their, uh, their, their investment in one place and uh, so that we will negotiate to uh, reallocate uh, with the, the areas that need uh, an attention for the, the, the uh, improvement of health information system because we have different communities like pastoral, uh, agrarian and urban. So many of partners, when they come, they, n they need to only invest in, you know, uh, urban areas. So we, we do map with different uh, uh, partners and we uh, reallocate uh, their, their budgets as well on that. So this is the, the, the applications that uh, we use to, we, we, that we are trying to uh, uh, map their, their uh, okay. uh, activities or what Sorry. they have. I think I have to cut you there. Um, yeah. You guys can discuss this in the coffee break, yeah. I think. Uh, let's have a quick, Anne, are you up there? Yep. Yeah. Thank you, so my name is Aang and I'm a WHO's in, uh, in uh, Geneva and I'm working on the health information system strengthening for countries. Um, just thank you a lot for the, for the presentation and the roles of the Ministry of Health and the HMAS in facilitating and managing and also the same for South Sudan. But I have two key things that I really would like to hear from the country experience. Ethiopia has been really embarked on a lot of new initiative and different projects. Um, and a lot of that also apply the WHO metadata standards um, um, toolkits. So where is the, the role of the government in implementing different projects in different areas, um, facilitating with different partners as well, because you have both WHO different projects working with different donors as well as donors themselves, um, especially in primary health care. So how do you facilitate that? And where does the data fit in for the HMAS? Where is the use of the data for the program? And the role of the data governance, the regulations, and especially in the data sharing. I'm very happy that you mentioned the pastoral projects, you know, where you have cross-border and um, data uh, for, for, for nutrition. So where is the role of the government there? And, you know, this is something that, you know, going to be um, the future perspective a lot on the health information. So the lesson learned from here would be very crucial for other countries in the future when we 
strength of the data used. And the second part I would like I to... I think we, that was m more than long enough, um, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The second is about the digital health, and that we can follow up in the, in the week. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think, I think we'll, we'll, uh, I will contact uh, you in the and, uh, tea break so that we can uh, discuss a lot on that. So we have clear governance, so we need to uh, plan together so we can align our planning and resource together. So the priority of, we, we prioritize our activities so that the, all the, that the partners can align on that. And we'll uh, see the areas that when we, uh, we can uh, collaborate and work on that. So I will, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jacob. So we have already tomorrow morning, we have more country stories than from Eswatini. And then uh, I think if you're interested in these kind of discussions on partnerships for country systems, the relations between donors and countries, and if you were intrigued by Kedende refreshing talk, we have a panel on this 10.30 on Thursday called Building Partnerships for Sustainable Systems, where Dr. Kedende We'll sit, not in a monologue, but directly next to the donors in the panel. It'll be interesting to follow that. So I recommend that session. Just before we take coffee break, um, I, we have a, one short video, if you can launch it, Grant. Um, there's a new implementation, a new DHS2 country in Latin America. That is Chile that started implementing DHS2 last year. Um, they've done this more or less on their own and, and really want to collaborate more with the DJI's community, share their innovations and their uh, skills. And uh, we just signed an MOU with them and we have a short one minute video with greetings from Chile. If you want to uh, hear more about Chile, they will also present remotely in the DHS2 in Latin America session 2.30 later today. Let's hear it from Minister of Health, Chile. Hello. Hello. Greetings from Pichilemu Health of the Department of Epidemiology of the Chilean Ministry of Health. The Ministry and the University of Oslo have signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the aim of... Hello. Greetings from Pichilemu, Chile. I am Christian Garcia, Health of the Department of Epidemiology of the Chilean Ministry of Health. The Ministry and the University of Oslo have signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the aim of improving health data management. This agreement seeks to support the existing implementation of DHIS2 in our department and share knowledge and innovation. The Ministry already has national implementations that cover childhood cancer surveillance, medication distribution, and different event surveillances. One of the main focus of the memorandum is training to maximize the use of DHIS2, knowledge transfer, and continuous improvement of the functionalities and usabilities of the platform. Our commitment is to contribute to the dissemination of knowledge and share our experience in the Americas and globally. In the future, we hope to implement our entire surveillance system to DHIS2 to obtain real-time data information on the national level, thus, facilitate the task of decision makers, optimizing response and public health management. We call on all countries, ministries of health, academic institutions and non-governmental organizations to join the collaborative work with DHS2 as an international public good. Our commitment is and will continue to be to make our developments available to all countries. We believe in collaboration in international public goods and in free software. From the Chilean AP Department, we are available to share our experience, keep working together to strengthen health information system for a global future with data-driven decisions for a better health for all. <laughs>